This week, America hit the sad milestone of reaching 100,000 lives lost to COVID-19. And presidential candidate Joe Biden posted this video to address it. Take a look. There are moments in our history so grim, so heartrending, that they're forever fixed in each of our hearts, a shared grief. Today is one of those moments. 100,000 lives have now been lost to this virus here in the United States alone. Each one leaving behind a family that will never again be whole. I know there's nothing I or anyone else can say or do to dull the sharpness of the pain you feel right now. But I can promise you from experience, the day will come when the memory of your loved one will bring a smile to your lips before it brings a tear to your eyes. So given where America is at right now, I mean, that, that's, that's what you want in a person running for president or, you know, just in a leader. That's what you want, compassion. And I wonder if voters are more likely to respond to that kind of compassion or what you know whose approach is. So what, what's your feeling, Joy? Oh, well, they have a choice more than I've seen in many years. Usually they say the Democrats and the Republican parties are very similar. I don't think in this case they are. Um, the voters have to decide if they want somebody like Joe Biden, who has suffered horrendous loss in his life, who seems to be an empathic person, or do they want somebody who makes fun of the handicapped, dead heroes, and uh, throws uh, paper towels at people during hurricanes? That's basically the choice that they have. Do you, what do you want? Right. You know, and um, I mean, I know that uh, Trump then tweeted something about the 100,000 dead, but that's only because Joe Biden did it. I bet he'd rather be out playing golf than, uh, than doing that. The whole country has to suffer because uh, his father liked his brother better or something. I mean, the man is lacking a genetic uh, part of his life, a part of his makeup, and that is empathy. He right. doesn't have it. He, you can't develop it. Right. I don't think that he will ever. He's old now. I forget about it. He's never going to have it. Right. So you know who says he wants to be a, a cheerleader for America. But is that the best way to show us that he wants to be a cheerleader for America, Sonny? Well, I, I think actions speak louder than words, and I don't think people really want uh, to hear from President Trump right now in the manner within which he is speaking. I mean, 70 days were lost uh, by the Trump administration in terms of responding to the coronavirus. Uh, it's been well documented now that had the administration acted sooner, over about 60,000 lives could have been saved. And, uh, you know, all the misinformation that we hear from President Trump, the malicious publication of tweets disparaging people, uh, attacking people, um, there's nothing really to be a cheerleader for America about coming from the way he has handled this crisis. You don't want to cheer about the fact that there are 100,000 people's loved ones dead. So I, I, I don't right. think uh, it's, it's not even a matter of approach. It's a matter of the messenger. And I don't think people want him right. to be the messenger. So who's more likely to strike the chord with voters here, Megan? Well, what I think is interesting is most political analysts, myself included, have been waiting to read some of the tea leaves about this pandemic. Um, given the controversial handling of it, and obviously the fact that this is a virus that impacts people over the age of 60 at a much higher likelihood than people under the age of 60, I've been curious to see how this is going to play out. So what's interesting is a new Quinnipiac poll came out saying that 52 percent of people over 65 in Florida are now supporting Biden over 42 percent of Trump. And we've actually seen, when it comes to the senior citizens' vote, a huge point margin of senior citizens turning in swing states on President Trump, which is fascinating given that um, in the last election, Trump beat Hillary Clinton in this very important demographic by 17 points. I think when you see people like Kevin Hassett, who was the economic advisor to President Trump, saying things like, Humans are a human stock capital going back to work, comparing people to that. And then rhetoric about opening up the economy, which we all agree with, 
but sort of with this this narrative that it's an older person's disease, so it, so maybe it doesn't matter as much. Younger people are going to thrive in the economy, and I think when you're um, talking about the meat and potatoes of retail politics, everything is personal. And if you're a person who's in a swing state over the age of 65, you're probably like, hey, it might chop liver. You're going to let this this virus come and get me. And I think actually more so than anything Trump and Biden are saying or campaigning on, I actually think they're Trump's and his and his staff and his um, advisors' response and rhetoric to this virus seems to be the thing that's actually moving the needle the most, and it's fascinating to watch. Well, the most interesting thing to me has been, over the last few days, my remembering the panic of people when they were told, we're closing American borders. So either you get back here, get your family, whatever you have to do, you have two days to do it. And remembering the visuals of all those people getting off planes from all over the world. I mean, Sonny, something you said made me think of this, and that is, even if he had done something 30 days sooner, it would have it would have diminished what he did later on by forcing people to come back without any thought to how we bring people back in. The fact that when you landed here, there was no checkpoints, there was nothing, and that those people spent five hours to nine hours in line trying to get their baggage, trying to get back in the country, all standing in these different airports. And that brought the strains from all over the world to all of our airports. That's why this has moved the way it has, because had we, had we been smart in how we got people back in the country, this never would, I don't think we would have ever seen what we've seen. But because everything was rushed, and that's what worries me about most of what he does. It's all rushed, and no thought to how it's going to play on real people's lives. It just, it totally just really freaks me out from time to time. It really does. So I, I think, y'all, we're just, this is what we're talking about for the next little while. And, you know, we're trying to make sure that we're doing the right thing. I was going to say, you know, the people who are sticking with him also don't care if he has empathy. Maybe they don't have any. Ever since he locked those children up at the border, made fun of the handicap, I listed a few of the things, they've already been behind right, him. Right. They have not changed. They're still 43 percent. So. Uh, the other side has to come out in enormous numbers because they're never going to change those people. That's how I say it. Well, you know, it's we have until November. It's a, many days till then, and we'll keep watching. 